Hello and welcome to the Stotts Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5 Small Angle Approximations. Now hopefully you've already watched the video on radians where we saw that radians was another unit of angles, just like degrees as a unit of angles, where one radian meant that you'd rotated one radius of the way around the circle. And if that doesn't make sense to you then I suggest you watch that video first. Now one thing we can do with radians is to find the approximate value of trigonometric expressions when we know that angle theta is really small. And that's absolutely critical uh, for when we're differentiating and integrating using trigonometric functions because the proofs by first principle for these depend on these small angle approximations. So let's see how it works. Let's suppose that we had a sector here and we also had this triangle here. And let's suppose that we had this angle here at the centre of the circle of theta. And let's also assume that theta is really small. Now what we're going to do is to compare the area of this triangle here and this whole sector here. Now if theta was really small, if I was to draw that much smaller, like a little thin slice, can you see that the area of the triangle there is pretty much equal to the area of the sector there? So let's try and find what these areas are. I'm going to make this radius here 1, just for simplicity. So the area of the sector would be, now do you remember that formula, half r squared theta, which is the area of a sector if theta is in radians. So in this particular case, it'll be half times 1 squared, because we made the radius 1, times by theta. So we just get half theta. Now what about the area of this triangle? So the area of the triangle would be, well, do you remember the formula half AB sine theta? And this formula is still applicable when theta's in radians, it doesn't change. So we're going to do half times one of these sides, 1, times the other side, that will also be 1, times by the sine of the angle between them, the included angle as we call it. So that just simplifies to half sine theta. But as we saw from this diagram here where theta was really small, the area of the triangle is approximately equal to the area of the sector. We can see that the difference between them is only this tiny little segment here which is almost zero if theta is small. So we can say if theta is small and in radians, then this area of the sector, half theta, is approximately equal to the area of the triangle, so half sine of theta. And if we just double both sides, we get that sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. And you can try that on a calculator. If you put your calculator in radians mode and you were to do sine of 0.001, your final will give you pretty much 0.001. And that gives us the first small angle approximation, but I will write the others. So if theta is small and in radians, we saw that sine of theta is approximately theta. And now I'm not going to prove the other ones, but cos of theta is approximately 1 minus half theta squared. And finally, tan of theta is approximately equal to theta as well. So we're going to use that to solve these various questions here. So this one's from the Pearson textbook. When theta is small, find the approximate value of, firstly, sine of 2 theta plus tan of theta over 2 theta. Now if we use these down here, we can see that sine of whatever the angle is, is approximately equal to the angle itself. So therefore that sine of 2 theta is approximately 2 theta. So we put 2 theta here. Now we saw that tan of theta is approximately equal to theta, so we can replace that with theta all over 2 theta. Now that's equal to 3 theta over 2 theta, which is therefore equal to 3 over 2. So that is the approximate value of this expression when theta is small. What about 1b? Cos of 4 theta minus 1 over theta sine 2 theta. Now that's approximately equal to, well cos of theta is 1 minus half theta squared, so cos of 4 theta is 1 minus half 4 theta squared. So make sure you do the correct substitution into this formula. We've still got the minus 1, and then we got theta is still theta, and sine of 2 theta, well sine of 2 theta is approximately 2 theta, because we replace theta with 2 theta. So that just becomes 2 theta. Now let's just simplify this. Well the 1 minus 1 cancels. 4 theta all squared is 16 theta squared, times by minus half is minus 8 theta squared. 
And then the denominator is theta times t theta, which is t theta squared. The theta squareds cancel, and we just get minus 4 as that approximate value when theta is small and in radians. Next one here, again from the textbook, and then we'll do an exam question. Show that when theta is small and in radians, that sine of 5 theta plus tan 5 theta minus cos of 2 theta is approximately 2 theta squared plus 7 theta minus 1. So if we write that out, well, this is approximately equal to, well, sine of 5 theta is approximately equal to 5 theta. Tan of 5 theta, well, tan of theta is approximately theta, so tan of 5 theta is approximately 5 theta. And then minus, and let's be careful, so I'm going to put brackets here. Cos of 2 theta is approximately 1 minus half 2 theta squared. So 1 minus half 2 theta squared. I've been very careful with brackets. Now this is equal to 10 theta minus 1. And then it's going to be plus because you've got minus minus. Now 2 theta squared is 4 theta squared. But we're halving it so it's plus 2 theta squared. Apologies, I've realised that should be 2 theta. So that should be 2 theta there and then that will be 7 theta. And that's indeed what we were trying to prove, that we get t theta squared plus 7 theta minus 1. Now part b is it wants us to approximate this further, so hence state the approximate value of this for small values of theta. Well, if theta is really super small, then a small number squared is going to be even smaller, so that's effectively negligible. And if that's super small as well, we can effectively ignore that as well, and we just end up with minus 1. So if they have like a part B of this kind of question where they ask you for an even more approximate value than this expression in terms of theta, you basically just sub theta in for 0 and then just see what you're left with. In this case, we'd have minus 1. And then just finally this exam question here, but you can see it's very similar to question 1B here. We've got 1 minus cos of 4 theta over 2 theta sine 3 theta. So we have 1 minus, now remember cos of 4 theta is 1 minus half 4 theta squared as per the formula. We got 2 theta, the theta just stays as theta, and sine of 3 theta is approximately 3 theta. And then let's simplify this, 1 minus 1 cancels, but we've got minus minus here, so it's going to be plus half times 16 theta squared is 8 theta squared over well, that is just 6 theta squared. The theta squareds cancel. We just get 4 over 3 as the answer.